Sweden has taken a very different approach to this pandemic with coronavirus. And, and uh, we, we have kept our society open. Uh, people are, are if, if they can, of course, they should work from home. That's a recommendation. But we have we, everything we get is recommendations. And I feel that people are, in Sweden are very strongly following recommendations. I mean, to keeping the distance, washing your hands. And if you feel the least sick, I mean, if you are coughing or if you have some fever, you should definitely not meet other people and, and go to work. Stay home if you have the least feeling. Uh, we have certainly also stimulated uh, that the econ economy keeps on some good level in the society. That's uh, shops and, and things are open, but they have restricted, I think it's the number to 50 people, not more, make meet in a meeting. So that means that much is still closed. The cinemas have closed. The football games, which is my love, <laughs> are not being played. So, so a lot, lot of things has happened. And, and they have also specific recommendations for those that are um, 70 plus, that are over, over 70 years. Because we can see that the high, highest... Um, Death rate is really coming in that age group uh, between 80 and 90, or actually also between 70 and 80. So, so, and unfortunately, we have got in the virus in our um, elderly care homes, homes for the aged, we could call it, um, including the level of nursing homes down to more. Uh, supportive homes where, where you could have uh, visits like up to five, ten times per day and night uh, to support you if you have uh, diseases. And in these more closed call them nursing homes, uh, we know that 70% of the individuals have dementia, um, uh, majority of them Alzheimer's disease. Um, and uh, we know that that certainly out of that population, many have genetic risk genes, like APOE4, as we talked about earlier. And uh, there was a recent report some days ago, uh, so an article in Guardian, where they it, it's an article from UK, where they have looked on the biobanked material, and they compared like I think it was. 9,000 people, E4, E4 carriers to uh, E2 and E3 carriers only. Um, um, I can see in Sweden that around 20% of our population has one or two E4 alleles. Um, out of those, three or four percent would have E4, E4. And they had 9,000. So it, it was an impressive study on how they can use a biobank material. And, and they reported a more than twofold increased risk if you had that to get uh, severe effects of your corona infection. Um, otherwise, we have talked much about risk factors like obesity, hypertension, diabetes, multimorbidity, we could say, in this aging group. But um, now they, what they did, they came down more on a mechanistic basic level. Of course, now we can look more uh, how the viruses uh, affect us. And, and of course, with our interest in, in dementia and Alzheimer's disease, we, we, we are certainly seeing that, that these corona patients that are elderly have a lot of cerebral symptoms. Uh, they, they really change character, um, they are often being aggressive. They come in to our wards, we have, in the geriatric, we have um, three wards now, it's out of our seven wards for only corona patients, elderly, and they are confused. 
They have lost smell, uh, a bit of taste, I would say. They are are uh, they they are different in behavior, and and and, and um, they also tell that there have a lot of of bad dreams. What do you call that? Nightmare. Nightmares. Nightmares. I have an interpreter here on side. <laughs> they have a lot of nightmares. They have uh, um, they are mixing realities, uh, and and uh, so life has not been the same as it was. And we can see f- certainly out of these wards, many come home uh, if they are hundred hundred five years, uh, but but and they are. Uh, we, we have to see that we have to also rehabilitate the the cerebrovascular damages. They have had, my thought is they have an encephalitis. All other organs are affected, kidneys, liver. It's a multi-organ disorder. The virus is spread in every cell in the body. But uh, for us, of course, the cerebral problems are, are big. And 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 um, that leads us also to be very much looking on the re- rehabilitation and the prognosis of these patients. And my concern is certainly that if this encephalitis will lead to a more cognitive impairment earlier than you could expect. I mean, does it come a dementia three, five, ten years after? Or, or I mean, we have to because they are very much like um, um, they get very tired after. It's like a brain damaged person who had a traumatic brain injury, for example. Ice hockey player you know, who falls on the ice with his head, or or a boxer who got boxing dementia. So, so, I mean, we have much concerns about this. And, and uh, one thought I had was also that, that perhaps this um, encephalitis, you, you know that they get uh, problems with the breathing um, and bad oxygenation. And, and so they have, a let's say, a week of, of fever, coughing. Then they feel well for a few days. Then they might get a new period with with a temperature and then more breathing problem and and of course uh, main focus has been on the lungs i mean that the um, exchange of oxygen in the lungs in the alveoli uh, would would be deranged and i'm sure it is because they have exudate coming out you see on the lung pulmonary imaging that 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 that's the case but i also think that the Brainstem centra are affected, regulating uh, breathing and regulating the the blood pressure, for example. So, so, so I, I mean, you can have effects both in other organs, but also for certain in the brain. That was some uh, idea still that we have to follow up these patients when they get out. We have to really look on rehabilitation and be. I would be happy if we could longitudinally follow up them with cognitive tests.